Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Jam. Today, it's time for a very special episode of plain, plainly plain reviewing. The, the, we have an entire save file full of planes to be reviewed originally by Ian Roberts. And I'm pretty sure most of them are, in fact, all of them it looks like I can load. They're all stock. Okay. Because he was afraid, or I was afraid, or both of us were afraid, I mean, we're all fearful people, that some of these might not be stock, in which case, you know, that would kind of screw things up. But, let me just accidentally click save, and point out that there are a lot of planes in here. So, I'm just gonna go through a few of them very quickly, and then the rest I'm gonna kind of save uh, for, I don't know, kind of like an extra series, because it's kind of not fair to everyone else to have like just 20 episodes of just all the planes in this one save. So I'm gonna go through these a little quicker than I usually would, or at least that's the intent. This has angled down thrust? What is... Oh, it's because these two. That is... This is gonna be weird to fly. Does it have instructions? No, it doesn't. This is... Does... See, these are not thrust limited. Neither is that. Interesting. Is it... let's see... There's... am I just supposed to fly it with those all on at the same time? I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. Also, I just remembered, this is lucky episode 13. Oh wow, what the shit? Why did it... why did it have that to shoot sideways? That... I don't understand this plane, this plane makes no sense to me. I... I really don't get this plane, like, what are we supposed to be doing? Maybe there's a key in the name, what's it called? It's called... I forgot the name of it already. Oh wait, if I click rename vessel, nope, that's small gear bay. Da da da, da da da, ba da ba ba ba, if I click rename vessel, Yakalov Yak144, what is that? I'm gonna look it up real fast. Meanwhile, I will kind of flip out slowly because this thing cannot stay straight, cannot stay level with those engines going at full blast like that. Yeah, it's supposed to be a VTOL. Yeah, it's based on an actual thing that's a VTOL. But the thing is, this thing, uh, it, it's, it looks like an unfinished craft. Maybe it's an unfinished craft. I don't remember if you warned me about unfinished craft possibly being in the save or not, but if there are, this is one of them. Next up we have the T-10-1, which looks a bit more conventional. well, compared to that last one in terms of engines, it's a bit more conventional, however the actual looks of it are a bit, still a bit strange. And it's got a bit of glitchiness with the wings, and it's, ah, it's Z-fighting, and it's annoying me! It's also amazing to note how many of these stories about the uh, Yak-141 is basically the source behind the F-35. Um, basically, it's a Russian VTOL plane, and the American F-35 design is very similar in some ways, which is interesting. Of course, there's only so many unique ways to design a plane and have it still function nice. So, you know, you can't entirely blame them for copying, because when it comes to planes, it's not just about looks, it's also about performance. It's also about, will you take off the fucking runway? Okay, so... Quick note, something to note here. Notice how far the rear landing gear are. If they were further forward, it would have taken off the runway much quicker than this. Also, the center of lift on this is so far, it's not that far behind the center of mass, but it's far enough behind the center of mass that you see how this thing barely turns. Like, it has almost no maneuverability. It can go down fairly well. Although even then, it's not as well as it could be if the center of lift was closer to the center of mass. Because it's so far back, it's very stable and not very maneuverable. Next up, we have Sukhoi Su-51K, which I'm guessing is supposed to be based off of an actual plane by a very similar, or rather, the same name. That wing is a bit glitched. That is weird. Interesting. Let's take a look at these centers of lifts and stuff. See, this one has the landing gear in a much more sensible location. The center of lift is also a little closer to the center of mass. And... Wow. Um, 
they may be in a more sensible location as far as back and forward, but uh, as far as vertically, this thing is pointing down quite a lot, which may make it a bit difficult to take off. Also, these seem to be doing the opposite of what they should be doing right now to help us lift off, but uh, that's something that I've noticed sometimes with parts on KSP. And you also have the problem of um, this thing wanting to dance around on takeoff, which is not very good for survivability, as evidenced by that beautiful takeoff from that piece of debris over there. Which surprisingly didn't entirely explode. And now it has. Another thing I'm noticing on a lot of these designs is that you're not distinguishing your control surfaces, like all your control surfaces are active all the time, and it usually looks nicer and performs better. Although not that much better, it is a slight improvement to have things disabled that aren't useful. For instance, disabling the yaw on something that can't yaw. And this is a Skylon craft, which is interesting. I, I tried to make one of these myself. Um, I th I'll be honest, I think mine looked a little bit better. Of course, uh, this is, as you can see by the fact that this is separate here. I think this might be using the parts before the update. I don't know, things things look a bit wrong. Then again, this part wasn't changed. So, actually no, he's just glitched it a little bit, which is strange. Hmm, I'm not too sure anymore. Center of lift is much further back on this one. Of course, it is intended to be an SSTO, and I imagine when you use up its fuel, that goes closer to center or whatever. Well, the mass shifts back, I'm sure. And uh, SSTOs don't really need to be maneuverable since it's not really supposed to be a fighter jet. And this one has a very, very slow start on the takeoff, which is what I was expecting. It is extremely heavy. It is laden down with all this fuel. I mean, it's almost entirely composed of fuel, and what little bit isn't entirely composed of fuel is composed of monopropellant, which is the same thing. Well, it's not the same thing, but it's still fuel. So we have more and more fuel all over this thing. I just noticed we have... we have sets of, uh... oh my god! We have little SR... uh, not SRBs, uh, Sepatrons. I'm wondering if those are supposed to be used to jumpstart our takeoff. When we get to the end of the runway, if we start falling, that's what I'll use to get us in the air. Because I'm assuming that's what they're there for, based on the fact that the ones on the back are aimed down, the ones on the front are aimed up, and this thing does not look like it's going to act like it's going to take off. And we've destroyed the rear of the plane. And now our, uh, now our uh, center of lift is far too forward, probably. We also don't have very much control. Although we are still flying. Interestingly enough, we are still flying. We have absolutely no uh, horizontal stabilization, though, so we're probably screwed. We're also dipping down. We're, yeah, we're going to start falling pretty soon here. I think I can actually pull up if I slam on the gas a bit. Oh wait, hold on. Um, which way do we need to turn? That way. Okay, um, that's not helping us really. So let's cut that. Oh, hey, we survived. Yeah, better buoyancy. Better buoyancy makes water landing survivable. Although I think that one possibly was a bit too survivable. I'm not sure though. I might need to update. And for our next plane, we have... Um, I don't think this will fly. Especially because it says it's a car, not a plane. But it should be fun to throw this against the runway at high velocity anyhow. Uh, IVA, for the true experience of driving a rocket car. See, from in here it doesn't look too bad. Like, we're not going that fast, everything looks fine. And then you realize our speed is pretty fast. But everything still seems perfectly fine. Also, I just noticed we don't really have... We don't have a parachute to slow us down. Um, this is gonna- oh! It's already gone bad. Um, I think we're, uh, possibly just a bit fu- Ah! Uh, 
Oh. Oh, we've bounced. We've bounced off of the water. And now we've landed in again. And again. And again. I think we're uh, pretty much stopped now. <laughs> that was an interesting ride. Next up, we have the Sky Bike, which doesn't really look like a bike, but does look fairly interesting and doesn't have any form of vertical stabilization, which is um, usually not a good thing. Unless there is some glitched in here. No, there is not. I did notice, however, that these are angled slightly down, it looks like. No, no, they're not. No, well, they're angled slightly, very, very slightly, which does offer a tiny bit of stabilization, but not really. And um, they are angled, well, when I said angled down, I meant like angled inwards or outwards. And they are angled down, like from front to back a bit. So that should be interesting with KSP's weird aerodynamics. This guy definitely likes to have um, low landing gear. Also, I like how because of the angle of the wings, we're actually still gaining lift even though the nose is pointed down. So this should in theory, take off. Of course, uh, I might need to help it along a little bit. There you go, see? Even though our nose is point- oh, well, now our noise is- no, noise? Nose. Nice nose is just about pointed level. We are actually lifting just a little bit because of these wings are lifted back a bit. Let's go ahead and pull up. This thing is very maneuverable. That's nice. It doesn't have any form of stability on the back there, though, which is interesting. Ooh, it's almost, almost losing control. Now we're flying sideways, because we don't really have that, like I said, we don't have that yaw control. However, it is flying fairly well despite that. Let's see if we can flip it out. No? Yeah, you can't really you can't really flip it out. You can go way off of where you should be able to, but it doesn't entirely screw up, which is nice. Let's uh, try gliding it in a little bit. See how well it does without the engine. In fact, I feel like it's probably going to perform a bit worse once the engine cuts out entirely because we'll go from having the very slight horizontal stability from the engine to no horizontal stability also. Looks like this thing does not produce very much lift without that engine. Or, you know, without the high speeds, rather. Or at least, it didn't appear to. Now it's now it's acting just fine, but for a minute there we were about to crash. Which would have been bad. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. See, there's something where that um, horizontal stability would have come in handy. However, we ended up not really needing it. And lastly for today, we have the spific spec cat spec. I'm not sure what that is supposed to mean. Yep, just as I thought, it's a real plane. It's a Anglo-French attack aircraft originally used in the British Royal Air, Fra Air, Fro Air Force and the French Armed. I don't know how to speak French, so I'm not even going to try to say that. And it's a what is it? Close air support and nuclear strike role. Still in service in the Indian Air Force. Interesting. So it has a nice little bit of history behind it. Why isn't that? Oh, and apparently we're gonna go straight into the ground with it. Actually, I that is. Oh, huh. That is interesting. I've just noticed this. So the wings are angled slightly, ever so slightly down. And that's probably why it's telling us center of lift is pointing down. And the also the cockpit is angled down. But our engines are under the center of mass, so they'll counteract that slightly. Hmm. This should be an interesting fly. Alright. Looks like we're ready to go. And we'll see how this goes. After that, I will stop for today, and we'll come back next time with some other... Thanks for watching, as always, see you in space.